we are very fortunate to have his holiness chandra mauli swami maharaj to enlighten us on shrimad bhagavatam canto 5 chapter 1 text number 14 so first of all i would like to hand over the call to tiffany mata ji to give the introduction of maharaj so mata ji please take over the call hari krishna hari krishna his holiness chandra mauli chandra mauli swami Uh, Maharaj is a disciple of ISKCON founder Acharya, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and he is an initiating spiritual master within the ISKCON movement. Maharaj was born in New Jersey in 1947 and came in contact with the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in Denver, Colorado, at the age of 24. In 1973 he began practicing Krishna consciousness in New York City and shortly thereafter began serving at the New Vrindavan farm community in West Virginia. That same year he received initiation from his divine grace AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. In 1986 his holiness Chandra Mali Swami accepted the sannyas order and began preaching in Cincinnati and Columbus Ohio. In 1995 he began serving as a resident sannyasi in Chicago where he was based until 2013 when he relocated to Karlovac Croatia. At present Maharaj offers spiritual guidance around Europe and the USA and in India. So Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much Mata ji. Yeah Hare Krishna Mata ji. I want to do the announcement. Maharaja has requested all of us that uh, after the class uh, we stay back and uh, chant one round of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So I request all the devotees uh, uh, for, to chant Hare Krishna after the class. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. So. Maharaj is not now. We are waiting for Maharaj, so we can chant meanwhile. Hey Krishna, Hey Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hey 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 Ram, Hey Ram, Ram Ram, Hey 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 Krishna, Hey Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hey 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 Ram, Hey Ram, Ram Ram, Hey 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 Krishna, Hey Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hey 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 Ram, Hey Ram, Ram Ram, Hey 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 Krishna, Hey Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hey 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 Ram, Ram Ram, Hey Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Shri Ram, Ram Ram. All glories to Shri Lal Prabhupada. All glories to your divine grace. So uh, today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj. So thank you so much, Maharaj, to enlighten us on Shri Mad Bhagavatam. So I would like to hand over the call to you. Thank you so much for your valuable association and time, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Om Ajnana Mirandasya Ganajana Salakaya Chaksu Um Militam Yenatas My Shri Guru Vinama Tuma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mukti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Picharine Nivrase Sasunya Vadi Pasyatya De Sitarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Ve Vajapatita Nam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitana Pramunatananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasani Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So someone yell We'll need a uh, reader for this because it's quite lengthy. If someone wants to read, I'll do the Sanskrit and uh, do the translation. Uh, but uh, then someone can read the purport. Yavajatatyam guna karma dhamma bi sudastarai vatsalvayam si jo jitaham. Sarve vahamo balimisvaraya Protam nashiva dvipade chatuspada 
translation. My dear boy, all of us are bound by the Vedic injunctions of the divisions of an ashram according to our qualities and work. These divisions are difficult to avoid because they are scientifically arranged. We must therefore carry out our duties of an ashram dharma like bulls obliged to move according to the direction of a driver pulling on ropes knotted to their noses. Okay, someone can, who can read very clearly and... Yeah, Indu Mataji. Indu Mataji. Can you be louder? Yes, yes, Mataji. Uh, <clears throat> if you want a second reader, you get another devotee also because the purport is, is quite lengthy. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So the purport is in this verse, the words uh, Tantyam Guh. Guna karma dhami, dhami bhi are very important. We each get a body according to our association with the gunas, the qualities or modes of material nature, and we act accordingly. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the four orders of the social system, namely Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, are arranged according to guna and karma, their qualities and work. There is some controversy about this, however, because some say that since one receives a body according to the guna and karma of his past life, it is one's birth that determines his social status. Others say, however, that one's birth according to the guna and karma of his past life is not the essential consideration since one can change his guna and karma even in this life. Thus, they say that the four divisions of the social order, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, should be arranged according to the guna and karma of this life. This verse is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam by Narada Muni. While instructing Maharaja Yudhishthir about the symptoms of guna and karma, Narada Muni said that these symptoms must govern the divisions of society. In other words, if a person born in the family of a Brahmana has the symptoms of a Shudra, he should be designated as a Shudra. Similarly, if a Shudra has Brahmanical qualities, he should be design designated a Brahmana. The Varnashrama system is scientific. Therefore, if we accept the divisions of Varna and Ashrama according to the Vedic instructions, our lives will be perfect and will be successful. Unless human society is thus divided and arranged, it cannot be perfect. As stated in the Vishnu Purana 3.8.9. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, do you want to read that? Vanasrama Charyavata Purushe Parapuram Vishnu Radhyate Panta Nanyata Toshakaranam. Thank you so much. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, is worshipped by the proper execution of prescribed duties in the system of Varna and Ashrama. Mm. There is no other way to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One must be situated in the institution of the four Varnas and Ashramas. All of human society is meant to worship Lord Vishnu. At the present moment, however, Human society does not know that this is the ultimate goal or perfection of life. Therefore, instead of worshipping Lord Vishnu, people have been educated to worship matter. According to the directions of modern society, men think they can advance in civilization by manipulating matter to build skyscrapers, big roads, automobiles, and so on. Such a civilization must certainly be called materialistic, because its people do not know the goal of life. The goal of life is to reach Vishnu. But instead of reaching Vishnu, people are bewildered by the external manifestation of the material energy. Therefore, progress in material advancement is blind. And the leaders of such material advancement are also blind. They are leading their followers in the wrong way. 
It is best, therefore, to accept the injunctions of the Vedas, which are mentioned in this verse as Yadvachi. In accordance with those injunctions, everyone should find out whether he is a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra, and should thus be educated accordingly. Then his life will be successful. Otherwise, all of human society will be confused. If human society is divided scientifically according to Varna and Ashrama, and if the Vedic directions are followed, one's life, regardless of his position, will be successful. It is not that Brahmanas will be elevated to the transcendental platform, but not the Shudras. If the Vedic injunctions are followed, all of them, Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras will be elevated to the transcendental platform and their lives will be successful. The injunctions in the Vedas are explicit directions from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The example cited in this verse is that bulls tied by ropes in their nostrils are moved according to the direction of the driver. Similarly, if we move according to the instruction of the Vedas, the perfect paths for our life will be set. Otherwise, if we do not move in that way, but act according to our whimsical ideas, our lives will be spoiled by confusion and will end in despair. Actually, because people at the present moment are not following the instructions of the Vedas, they are all confused. We must therefore accept this instruction by Lord Brahma to Priyavrata as the factual scientific direction leading to the success of life. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 16.23. If we do not live according to the injunctions of the Shastras, the Vedas, we shall never achieve success in life. To say nothing of happiness or elevation to higher statuses of living. Hare Krishna. Okay. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gnajana Salaka Yajaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha. So the Vedas, the directions in human society are given by the Lord himself. Therefore, the Vedas are called Apaurushad. It's a word that is used to describe something that is not man-made. The Vedas are coming from the Lord, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaishtusaham aham veda vedo, Vedantakrit veda vid eva chaham. I am the compiler of the Vedas. I am the knower of the Vedas. And the Vedas are ultimately meant to know me. So Krishna, yeah, put the verse back up again. It's hard for me to look at myself when I'm talking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, the, uh, so the Vedas are actually the directions for human society and the Vedas are vast. There's different sections of the Vedas. There's the Karmakana, the Jnanakana, Upasanakanda. There's the Shrutis, there's the Shmitis divided into two. There are the Dharma, Dharma Shastras, there are the Puranas, Itihasas, and various Upavedas. So the Vedas are very fast, but the essence of the Vedas is the Srimad Bhagavatam, which gives the direction for elevation to the supreme goal of life. If one does not follow Veda, just like it says in any religious order, if one does not follow scripture, just like if you're a Christian and you don't follow the, the Bible, you're called a heathen. If you are Islamic and you don't follow, you are called Kafi. If you are Hindu, and you don't follow the Vedas, you are considered to be Gnostic. Gnostic means atheist. So each of the religions have their scriptures to follow. But Vedas is a complete scripture. Veda is a, is a power shot. It's not man-made. 
where a lot of the other scriptures are coming at a certain time in the history of mankind. And therefore, they are not eternal. But the Vedas are eternal because they come in Tene Brahma Hidai Adi Kabuye. They come directly from the Lord through Lord Brahma, who manifests the Vedas to the human society. Uh, therefore, as Prabhupada says, everyone is confused because they don't follow any higher order. People do what they want, when they want, whatever they want. And uh, therefore, they're no better than animalistic life because an animal will move according to, actually animals are also under the control of material nature. And so they act according to their nature. But humans are even a little different in, in category that they act outside of their nature according to their, what we call misuse of God-given intelligence. And therefore they even act lower than animals. That's why Srila Prabhupada, when he would speak, many times he would very rightly just address the human society as just a, a bunch of animals because they don't know the direction of life and they think economic development and sense gratification is the goal of life. Economic development is, there's no need for economic development as Prabhupada explained so nicely. The Lord provides everything you need to live nicely in this world without having to uh, endeavor to get more. There is a little effort to get some food. There's a little effort to make some, some arrangement to live, but those efforts are small in proportion to the time that is available. But now people spend their whole day working like asses just for a paycheck so they can somehow or other buy some food or get some, some technological gadget. And therefore people are lost. They don't know what is the goal of life and they just struggle hard. And then they wonder why they have so many problems. They wonder why they're not happy because if you're going the wrong way and you're trying to be happy, obviously you're going to meet things that are against your goal in life, your happiness. Therefore, you can't do whatever you like and expect to get the benefit. So an intelligent person will understand that higher authority is coming from those who, who, who are in that position to give it. And therefore we have the scriptures, we have the saints, and we have the acharyas who have given us the direction according to Krishna's teachings in the Shastras. Everything is there. It's simply a matter of following. Now here, also in this verse, we're talking about Vanashram. Now Vanashram is material. Brahma, Shatra, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmachari, Grihasa, Vanaprasa, Sanyas. Uh, when Lord Chaitanya was speaking with Sri Ramananda Roy, in a place called Kabor. Um, they were just, uh, Raman Andaroy started to speak about what is the actual perfection of life. And the first thing he mentioned was a Vanashrama Charyata Purusham Nama Vishnu Arati Panta Nandato Shansakara Nat. And Lord Chaitanya said, that's very nice, but that's external. Give me something more. <laughs> so after hearing, about Van Ashram, the Lord wasn't so impressed with it. Because the scriptures give for the materialist, this is the best thing that they can do in order to get out of their material entanglement is to follow the Van Ashram system. One who follows the Van Ashram system can eventually comes to the stage of spiritual practice if they follow Van Ashram properly. So it's a matter of we have we we have two we have two natures we have our swadharma and we have our sanatan dharma. Each person has swadharma. Each person has sanatan dharma. Everyone has the same sanatan dharma. Sanatan dharma means the eternal dharma, and what is that? Jivar sarupai Krishna nityadas to engage in devotional service and to satisfy the Supreme Personality Godhead. Uh, 
in, in the Bhagavad Tam in the first canon it says, Hari Toshanam. Tosha means to please. The, the goal of life ultimately, no matter what is your occupational duty, is to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the actual goal in life, who is the cause of all causes and the source of everything in existence. And so people don't follow that. And therefore, uh, in order to get them to the stage of Sanatan Dharma, this Vanashram Dharma is given in human society. And Krishna says the system was created by me, as it says here, by the four orders of the social system are arranged according to qualities and rights. But Krishna says, I am the creator of this system. But Ashram, uh, what is that? What is that verse? Chaturvanya Maya Srista Guna Karma Vibhaga Saha. So in the fourth canto, I'm sorry, fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna mentions that system and he says that system was created by me. But we live in this particular time called Kali Yuga. And therefore, when people are born, nobody knows their particular Varna. Because Varna is also part of the Samskara system. And Samskara has been done away with in Kali Yuga. So nobody knows their Varnas. And therefore, it says, Kalo Sudra Sambhava, that everyone in this age is Sudra, born Sudra. Therefore, Prabhupada mentions in this purport that one requires education. So one, even if one is born in a Brahmin family, they must be educated as a Brahmin. If one is born in a family of Kshatriyas, they also receive that type of education. And Vaishyas also, Sudras don't require education. So one can be designated accordingly and then take the education and in order for those qualities to manifest. But it's not simply the qualities, it's also the guna and the karma. The guna and karma should be arranged in such a way that the guna, the karma follows the guna. What does that mean? One should work according to their nature. So therefore, society is organized according to Varnashram Dharma. That is ideal society. That is what Krishna actually set in place as the ideal society. But nowadays, because no one understands what is the ideal society or even the goal of life or, or Vana, anything, there is no understanding of Varnashram Dharma. Or it has been perverted in places in the world, such as India, by the idea of a caste system. There's no such thing as caste, it's class. The word caste has somehow or other appeared on the scene by someone's intervention. So it's classes, the four classes, Brahmins, Kshatriya, Vaishyas, and Sudras. So Prabhupada wanted to combine both the materialistic uh, tendencies, which is our Swadharma, with our eternal nature, which is our Sanatan Dharma, and that is devotional service. So what we have is Prabhupada's complete perfect plan is that you engage in service according to your material nature. And as your material nature do, is perfected in the service, then that actually becomes the best way to serve the Supreme Personality of God. So one should serve the Lord according to one's nature. Of course, when our society first started, that wasn't the focus. The focus was simply distributing books and chanting the holy names. And Prabhupada spread the movement fast based on that. But later on, Prabhupada wanted to in include, and this was in 1974, Prabhupada started to talk about how to bring about Daivi Vanashram, and that is the important part, not just Vanashram, but Daivi. Daivi means spiritual Vanashram. It's not about doing your duty in a materialistic way. It's about, do it, it's about following your nature and offering services according to your capacity as to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Like that.
So that is the that is the goal of our society, ultimately, for people to follow in that way. And that way you have a social division based on the goal of life, which is to go back home, back to Godhead. Because without the social division, it becomes very difficult unless you're on the highest platform. In other words, well, the Daibi Van Ashram gets you to that platform of transcendence. And transcendence means you, it doesn't matter what service you're doing because you're fixed on the, the spiritual platform. And then one can do any services, even, you know, mixed varnas. But Van Ashram is a principle of elevation to the transcendental platform based on one's nature and qualities as given in the Bhagavad Gita and explained in detail by Srila Prabhupada in his lectures and in many, many parts of the Srimad Bhagavatam. But one has to serve. That's the whole point. And how best to serve like that. So there are different kinds of Van Ashram. We're not interested in material Van Ashram uh, because people... The society is so topsy-turvy now that you can't really uh, change it. All you can do is engage people in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That's practically all you can do at this point. They have no ideas of, like that. Just like you have the government. And most governments are run by sudras at best. There are a few kshatriyas that are running governments around the world but they don't know what the qualities of a Kshatriya are and therefore they usually are very, uh, what we say, advantageous to take advantage of other countries like that. But otherwise you have mostly sutras and below sutras. Sutra means selfish, self-interested and the government leaders, they don't care about the people they present themselves as caring in order to get elected so they can get some post, some power, some influence, some followers, and ultimately a lot of wealth. So they just sap the people's energy. So therefore, uh, what we want to start is our own Van Ashram system on a spiritual platform, keeping service to Krishna as the only focus of of all of our activities. That is the ultimate goal like that. But when you divide the society according to the three, three top ashrams, then you have everything you need. There's no scarcity. And then the social function works according to, to Krishna's system. The Brahmanas advise the Shastriyas and the Vaishyas supply what is needed on the material platform for people's, uh, you know, we say welfare, material welfare. And the sutras assist by doing various services. The kshatriyas lead according to principles, according to spiritual principles, and the brahmins, they advise. So that is the ideal society. It sounds kind of far-fetched today because everything is so bad. When you, when everyone is a fool and somebody walks in and starts and is intelligent, he's out of place. <laughs> As they say, they say, uh, you know, among an intelligent person amongst fools is just seen as another fool. <laughs> so therefore no one can recognize the benefit of organiz organizing the society according to Krishna's arrangement. They think it is too fantastic. It is not practical. And even if they do, they think, where do we start? <laughs> okay, so these are some things. And Prabhupada smashes the whole idea of material society in this purport, showing the futility of simply trying to increase the uh, benefits of materialistic living. Andha, the word andha means blind. Andha. Blind means the leaders in such society are blind. And as, I, as it says in the uh, 
in the Upadesham, no, no, I'm sorry, in the, uh, what is it? Chanakapana slokas that if you have a blind man that is leading, everybody else will fall in the ditch because he's going off the cliff and he'll lead everybody in the wrong way. Yeah. So that's today's society. And therefore people, a larger majority of the people don't have any faith in the leaders, <laughs> rightly so, because there's no, there's no leadership to nowadays. Yeah. So what Srila Prabhupada wanted to do is to start our own society based on the Varnashram, the Daivi Varnashram, and show the example to the rest of the world how to live in God consciousness and working according to the ideal social system. Otherwise, society will continue to go on and become more and more degraded and people will suffer more and more various types of calamities, pestilence, material eruptions from the from Mother Earth, and ultimately wars, economic crunches. It'll just continue to things will keep going down, down, down. This is the nature of Kali Yuga. It's been predicted that, that it will happen like this. But there is one bright light, as it says in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Kalir Doshani Dirajan, Astiyako Mahagun, Kirtana Eva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangam Param Bajan. That in this age there is one very bright light. If we can spread the holy names everywhere and anywhere, then people can have a chance to get out of their, you know, what we say, confused situation. That is the only hope, at least. The, the hope, it's becoming more and more hopeless that society will change to anything any, any better. And actually it won't because there's no direction. Nobody knows what to do. And everybody's coming up with more and more of the same ideas which create more and more problems. As Prahlad Maharaj explains that materialistic solutions to material problems are more problematic than the problems. Okay, so uh, can we can stop here and see if there's any discussion by Ashram Krishna consciousness. Hey Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj uh, for giving us the idea of Devi Varnashram system. So, uh, Maharaj, uh, I have one question, like uh, uh, you explained about uh, that uh, there are two dharmas of a living entity, that is Sanatan Dharma and Swadharma. So, Sanatan Dharma is uh, to serve uh, the Lordship, like uh, um, Krishna and Nitya Das. So, uh, like I didn't understand, like uh, how Maharaj, we will know that what is Swadharma, like... Uh, how we will categorize, like in which category we belong to, like which is and our... Every, yeah, like I mentioned that everyone is born Sudra in this age. But when people have certain tendencies in certain natures, so that nature and tendency is, is observed by the spiritual master and then people can receive education accordingly. So therefore Prabhupada's idea was to establish what is called Banasham College. First, Prabhupada wanted to make a society of brahmanas, and that's what he focused on. So that's why he gave Brahminical uh, initiations. But then once brahmins are established, they are the teachers. The brahmins are the teachers. And they will run the educational institutions within the society to, to guide people and to educate people. And the other two main varnas, which are... Uh, Kshatriya and Vaishya like that, and also Brahmins like that. So Prabhupada in 1974 gave a one hour plus lecture. It was more actually a discussion with Sri Dayananda Maharaj, March 14th, 1974 in Vrindavan. You can hear that he talks in detail about Van Ashram. Again, in February, uh, February, what was it? 
was it? February 14th, 1977, in a room conversation with Sacharup Maharaj and Hari Sari. Again, Prabhupada goes into detail about Daivi Van Ashram. And in between, Prabhupada talked a lot about it also. But he saw that we, we would have to first establish a class of brahmanas and then from there and train. And it's going on. It's going on within our society now. Train people according, accordingly. So a person may be designated by their tendencies as observed by their spiritual master or by someone who has the qualifications to give, you know, guidance like that. Thank but you. you also you also get a little indication as you live life, what is your nature? What is your tendency? It doesn't mean it is your tendency, but it may but if you observe yourself, you'll see whether you have a Brahman, Brahminical nature, a Kshatriya nature. Also, your gotra will be somewhat indicated of what is your nature. But again, it still requires education because in this age, because of some, the samskaras are, are gone, nobody follows any of the samskaras. There's no Garbhadan samskara. And so therefore education and training is required. And that was the purpose for Prabhupada's uh, wanting to establish these Vanashram colleges. Yeah, thank you so much, Maharaj. It helps a lot. Thank you, Hare mm -hmm. Krishna. So now I will request devotees that they can ask questions. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Prabhupada and all glories to all the Vaishnavas. Uh, Maharaj, I, my question is, Prabhupada wanted to establish the colleges according to the Varnashram. But he had also said that we all have to ascend to the mode of goodness, which is sattva. And sattva means actually the Brahminical nature. So how do you explain that, Maharaj? Yeah, but yeah, you'll see that not everyone can do that because their nature fights against that. So you have some people who are natural leaders, who are organizers who are martial spirited. You have martial spirited people within our society. These people have these tendencies for Kshatriya. Um, I was working with a group of Kshatriyas a few years ago and there was one who is a trained Kshatriya and he told me for years he was trying to become a Brahmana but then he realized it was just not his nature. But then finally he understood more and then he took training under Kshatriya and then his, his nature started to uh, blossom, started to come out. And then he became a teacher also like that. So yeah, that was Prabhupada's idea in the beginning, but at the same time, you're not gonna find that and that everyone can come up to that. Because we are engaged in devotional service, we're above the three modes of material nature. So any service done to Krishna is not within the three modes of material nature. The Brahminical uh, or the mode of goodness is a stepping stone to transcendence. But if you're engaged in devotional service, then you have those qualities. So it's not about Brahm, it's not about Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. It's about uh, serving the Lord according to how best you can serve. You know, I know one temple where the Pajaris are, the Pajaris are definitely a Kshatriya nature of Pajaris, most of them are. And so they all want to, they all want to be in control. <laughs> I won't mention that temple. <laughs> they all want to be the directors. <laughs> because Kshatriyas means to control, to rule, to organize. 
So these natures are there. Sometimes they're mixed within due to our material conditions. And that's why this training program helps to bring it out in a, in a spiritual way. Does that make sense? Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. I, I, now I follow it better. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you. Hare we have a, a Kadamba Priya has his hand raised. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Really well. Maharaji, uh, I have a question about the Vanda Ashram. Like when we are trying to preach to the when we are trying to preach to the newcomers, and how can we tell them that uh, in the Kali Yuga everybody is a Shudra, everybody is born Shudra? Because you know, I've tried yeah. with some people, but they become agitated upon hearing this thing, especially Indian people. Well, when preaching, you don't tell everything. You tell what is necessary in order to help them move forward. Uh, we, you can say what is right without saying what is not right. <laughs> That's a tactic for preaching. So we, we can explain that. Um, you know, qualifications in order to practice devotional service are learned through various systems. So you, rather than saying, well, you're not qualified. <laughs> it's just a matter of semantics, I think. Like that. Does that make sense? G G yeah, yeah, be, you know. When you're preaching, you have to use certain language that, like if I'm talking to devotees, I speak more directly. If I'm speaking to non-devotees, I speak less directly. Um, just the way the audience has to be, you know, understood, and then you speak according to the audience or try to understand your audience. Thank you. Does that help? Yes, yes. Yeah. If you put people on guard by saying something that's negative, then whatever else you say, they may not ex they may not accept. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Srila Prabhupada. All goes to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for enlightening class. And every Friday is very blissful. Uh, thank you so much. <clears throat> my question is like, uh, when we say our own dharma, so I thought uh, like uh, uh, dharma of a mother and father and uh, we have to take care of children and uh, like that I was thinking when Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita Sarva Dharman Parityacha so what if, what he meant for that Sarva Dharma Pradikshit Ma Mami Kamcharanam Raja that means uh, <laughs> surrender to him in devotional service that's what he means for that one hmm. Because the, the commentary on that verse explains that you may have different ways to find uh, the Supreme Lord or make advancement towards spiritual goals. But Krishna says, forget about all these ways that you have and just surrender to me and I'll take care of you. Surrendering to Krishna means surrendering to Krishna's instructions. And Krishna's instructions are given through Krishna's pure representative, the spiritual master. So that's a pure, purely spiritual statement. It has nothing to do with uh, material responsibilities. Material responsibilities, Krishna is not so much interested in telling us what to do. Everything becomes clear about it. 
we know we know what to do materially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Marsh. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So my question is about, um, it seems in modern times, um, and especially in a country like the United States, where people come from so many country, different countries and backgrounds, it seems that we have mixed natures. Is that is that the case, or is that possible, or? Yeah, yeah. You mean mixed material natures? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. yeah, that's also possible. But again, training will bring it. You'll bring your main main quality out. Everyone has a main quality, but it might be mixed due to association in the in with the with our previous activities in this life. But that's still, that's still our conditioned nature, that we have a pure material nature, but that has to be found through the process of observing by the spiritual teacher. Prabhupada writes about that, that the spiritual master observes his disciple to see what is their nature and then he guides them accordingly. In other words, he engages them in service according to that nature. And that way they make, they make more advance, they make faster advancement because they're working well in something that is more natural. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, when one make, well, if one practices devotional service after some time, they can transcend all their material natures and, and come to the spiritual platform. The Prabhupada could see that it wasn't so easy for devotees to do that. Therefore, he wanted to introduce this Daivi Maharashtra. And that way it becomes clear through the educational system. That's where education becomes the main thing. Education and engagement. Just like Prabhupada was giving a report by one uh, Gurukul teacher, I think it was in Hyderabad. And uh, there was one boy in the class that was always disturbing the whole entire class. So the boys are being trained in Brahminical qualities and Brahminical education. But this boy was always just fooling around disrupting the class. So after Prabhupada was hearing the report, he said, the boy is not suited for Brahminical education. Put him out on the farm and let him do some farm work. So yeah, so we get a chance to see how people function within a certain environment. And then we can uh, uh, designate services according to accordingly like that. That's the duty of the spiritual master, the duty of the temple presidents to be able to do that. Now what you like to do may not be your nature, your sphere of material nature. Maybe it's just something that you developed in association with with the, with that activity throughout part of your life. But it may and it may not be. That's why the education is required to, to make it clear. But the whole idea is to serve Krishna and go back home, back to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for your association, as Shamagori said. It's so wonderful to spend Friday mornings with you. So thank you, <laughs> Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Happy to be with this wonderful group of devotees from Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte Plus. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank, thank you very much for beautifully explaining the concept of the dharma and varnashram dharma. A lot of things are coming into light for me. 
um, and and you just you may have just just uh, just touched the que my question that I was having is often uh, I think you touched where you may not you may like something that you want to do but that may not be your dharma because often when I think about myself um, it you know I get influenced by other people's activities or whatnot right when we see other people doing things nicely or whatnot we may feel that this is what I want to do. Or something like that. So, how does one understand, or or maybe what is the difference between liking something versus what our dharma is? Well, your, your good qualities will start to manifest through the activities. That is, but again, as we said, it requires observation from spiritual teachers and spiritual guides. We can. It's pretty hard to see yourself you're so much involved within yourself you can't see yourself out of outside of yourself a lot of times but after some time when you observe yourself you start to see what is your ten do you have a tendency to teach do you have the tendency to make money do you have the tendency to organize do you have a tendency to lead do you have a tendency to you know preach krishna consciousness do you have a tendency to for study? So you see some of these tendencies in your own day-to-day -day life, and you can get a little idea. But then it only becomes clear when it's engaged in devotional service. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, one more question. You know, I always never understood this verse from Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, it is okay to do your dharma improperly versus trying to do a different dharma perfectly something in those lines yeah what does that mean yeah that's yeah that's in the third chapter 335 let's see uh also in the third chapter 335 and in 1846 i think or 47 in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna speaks about these two. The one should follow their dharma, which means their materialistic dharma, and then engage in devotional service. So what is your question is? I never understood, you know, because when Krishna says, even if you're doing perfectly, it is still dangerous versus imperfectly doing your own dharma. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, to follow another's path is, uh, well, maybe we can bring up that verse, 335. Yeah. Is it 335? Yeah. That's it. Sweya Swadharma Vigyanam Paradharma Svanustita. Svanustita Svadharma Nidanam Sriya Paradharma Bhayavaha. It is far better to discharge one's prescribed duty, even though faulty, than another's duty perfectly. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duty, or to follow another's path is dangerous. This is material described. This is materially. That's what they're talking about. Because here it said duties on the spiritual platform and duties on the material platform may be different. But the principle, let me see, but where we, I lost it. But the principle of following the authorized direction is always good for the performer. Okay. When one is under the spell of the most, one should follow the prescribed duty for his particular situation and not try to imitate others. Okay, for example, Brahma is, is nonviolent, whereas a Kshatri is the mode of passion, is allowed to be violent. So if a Brahmin tries to imitate a Kshatriya, and a Kshatriya tries to... There are examples in the scriptures where people have changed their varnas in order for an emergency situation, and that is also mentioned. The one that says here, better to follow your own dharma. Everyone has to cleanse his heart by a gradual problem, not abruptly. Okay. 
As long as we're still situated on a material platform, one must act according to the, the, the duties of the modes of material nature. At the same time, you must have a full sense of Krishna consciousness. As I explained, this one person I had met uh, who um, was telling me that, you know, he always tried to become a Brahmin, but it just didn't work. <laughs> yeah. And then finally he understood he, he had more of a Kshatriya nature. And then when he trained in that way, his nature came out and he was able to offer wonderful service to the society. Mm -hmm. So that takes, uh, that takes education. It also takes evaluation, evaluation, education. Mm -hmm. Well, we can do anything for Krishna at a given time, but if you want to stay fixed in devotional service, then it's recommended to work according to your nature. If you're working according to nature, then you'll then you'll be fixed in devotional service. Otherwise, you may go in and out if you're not working according to your nature. It becomes more sporadic, less consistent. <laughs> I know what I like to do, and I can see some of these qualities fit in a certain mode like that. I know one leader, a very elevated leader, he said, you know, he's a preacher, he's a writer, he's a preacher. He, told, he, he, he makes it public. He said, my nature is, I'm a Vaishya. Although he's doing preaching work and he's doing, uh, you know, Brahminical work, he says, my nature is Vaishya, because I'm always thinking how to get money to use to spread Krishna consciousness. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you, you even see it, we, it becomes clear. I mean, I, I know this one person, I mean, he had millions of dollars, but still he's going to work. He's got millions of dollars. He's got whatever he needs, but still he can't stay home. He has to work. He has to make more money. He's a Vaishnava. <laughs> he enjoys it. He doesn't need the money, but he finds happiness in making more and more money because it's his nature. <laughs> but that's material again. So you, if you're interested in finding out your nature, then observe yourself and also talk to people who know you. And of course, the best thing is to talk to a spiritual master and that will give you a little more clarity. <laughs> Thanks, Maharaj. Thank, thank you so much, Maharaj. I think it becomes very clear. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Krishna Maharaj. Actually, you know, I had the, I've been having the identical question for a very long time. And the confusion for me is that, the confusion for me is that, you know, the verse says that is even if you do, even if you're able to do someone else's duty perfectly, you should do your own, even if you do it imperfectly. And so the reason why um, I have a question about that is because if you are able to do someone else's duty perfectly, then it seems like that's, that's what you should be doing. And if you're not able to do your own perfectly, then it, it seems like maybe that's not what you're supposed to be doing. So I don't, that's, that's what's causing the confusion for me. Well, you have to know what is your duty. The duty is given by the spiritual master. He engages you accordingly. So if you follow that, you're, you're, you're fine. But this verse, 
shows that when people who are not on the spiritual platform, who are still stuck within the modes of material nature, should follow their nature so they can rise up and eventually become fixed in Krishna consciousness. But it is your nature that determines, isn't it your nature that, it's your nature that determines your duty. So, well, yeah, but in our society, we're not so we're not doing that now. We're we're def definitely people are just being engaged in what is necessary. It's gradually changing, due to the leader, certain leaders. Certain leaders are actually working to establish this mood, this proper mood that Prabhupada gave us. But you have to actually engage in the service and not just take the education. If you're doing a service and you're doing it nicely and you're offering it to Krishna, that's fine. You can do, but if you, unless you're working under the guidance of a spiritual master, you may decide to do whatever you want to do. And Krishna, Krishna, remember, Krishna doesn't need anything from anyone. But if you're working under the guidance of a spiritual master, then that's your that's your connection to Krishna. If you're doing whatever you want and offering it to Krishna, he doesn't have to accept it. Even if you do it perfectly. The idea is to follow authority. This is the whole thing. We don't want to follow authority. We want to do what we want to do. And that's our problem. We want to do what we want to do and call it Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Anti-authoritative mood that permeates the entire world. Even those in authority don't take any authority from anybody. <laughs> We're okay, so a system of uh, Krishna consciousness is based on following authority. <laughs> okay, so therefore, doing your doing your duty or your prescribed duty refers to that work that has been instructed to you by the authority in your life whether you can do that well or not and work that you do even if you do it well but if it has not been um prescribed to you by your authority even if you do that well then um that's it's not as favorable to do that yeah i took it and then Prabhupada's focus is a little different. He's talking completely on the material platform. Because that, ver that verse is from a third chapter, and the third chapter is karma yoga. Yeah, see, now when it comes to the material, if, if you're only seeing... You have, to understand the difference be you have to understand the difference between karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, and the connection between all three. And how... A lot of times we're still doing karma yoga and jnana yoga, although we would consider it to be bhakti. We, we do an activity, we want to jo enjoy the fruits of the activity, that's karma yoga. We study scriptures in order to become learned in the scriptures, not to become what we say advanced in Krishna consciousness. Wait, karma yoga, I thought karma, those who engage in karma yoga, they want to give up the fruits of their activity, not enjoy. That sounds like karma kanda. They gave a little bit of it. They give up a little bit of the, the fruits, that's all. Yeah, but I thought they were working towards at least, towards well, yeah, everything. Okay, so all right, they're, they're they're doing the activity, they're giving the fruits like that, but they're attached to their own way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, the idea is to be attached to Krishna and Krishna's service. And that requires guidance, instructions. That verse that we were discussing is a little bit about ha on the completely uh, within the modes of material nature. In other words, if you're still struggling with the modes of material nature, if you want to gradually, this is the point, gradually advance towards the spiritual platform, but at best to work according to your own duty, even if it's faulty. So don't mix that verse up with, it's not, it's not about bhakti that verse. Although Prabhupada said one should have a sense, a full sense of Krishna consciousness. He doesn't say be Krishna conscious, you have a sense of Krishna conscious. In other words, moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, Krishna describes different categories of, of uh, practitioners in Bhagavad Gita. So that one's on emphasis on, as emphasis on karma. Yes, the, the one in the third chapter is the emphasis on if you're just strictly working in the mode. Yeah. You know, I just, that's, I'm just, that's what the, it says. you know, like, like I said before, I, I, you know, it was just confusing because if, if you're able to do another person's duties perfectly, then it seems like that should be your duty, not your own, if you're only able to do your own faultily. No, it's, it doesn't say do your own faultily. It says it's better to do your own faultily than do another's duty. I know. No, that's, a, that's what I do, said. Do, you do your own duty nicely, not faultily. No, I didn't say that. I said that verse is saying it's better to do your own duty, even if you can only do it faultily, than to do someone else's perfectly. Right. That's but what the my, what, right. But I'm saying, if you can do somebody else's duty perfectly, the fact that you can do it perfectly seems to imply that that should be your duty. Not no. No. Where did you get that from? That's, I'm just saying how I, I'm how it, uh, Krishna's how not interested in your 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 in, in anything. He's interested in your in your surrender. Just surrender. Have to surrender. We don't. We're not surrendered. We want to. We want to make our own way of, of of thinking how we can make advancement. But we're talking about the verse in chapter three, which is not about bhakti. So. Why I don't know why we're talking about surrender. And it's leading. Bhakti. It's leading to bhakti. It's a foundation by which one can work and gradually elevate oneself towards pure devotional service. The spiritual okay, master. Right. Spiritual master gives you a duty, and you want to do something else, then. You're, you're negligent. Yeah, but that's if we're talking about the 18th chapter verse. We're, we're talking about this one that's focused on the modes. Well, well why, are you, why are you coming up with a different uh, interpretation of the verse? Just take it the way it is. No. That's, yes, but that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to understand Krishna's words. Krishna's telling you better to do your own duty imperfect. That's Krishna's words. It's not Prabhupada's words. So what, what's the problem? Just accept what Krishna says. Okay, I'm not able to phrase my question any differently. So I guess we just have to leave it there. 
Yeah, well, it's just, you know, we just take it as it is. That's what, that's, you know, why do we yeah, have to? Yeah, but to take it as it is, I have to understand it. All right, so I give you the, I gave you the point. I know, that's why I'm saying we have to leave it there because, you know, we're not making headway. Okay, what can but, I say? But thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Anyway. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Very, very nice. You are saying everything. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, should we uh, do our one round of japa? Yes, good. Yes, I'm japa bead. Shamagori? Yes, yes, Maharaj, we can do, yeah. Um, yes, Maharaj. That was something that we just requested, and then I got the answer that this was, the devotees were fine with that, they would... We could end with, with each time with one round of japa. If you don't want to, that's fine, but... No, Maharaj, yeah. Yes, we want. Yes, Maharaj. We want to chant with... Yes, yes Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> we would love to. Okay, so... Okay, everyone get their beads and we'll begin by praying for the mercy through Panchatattva, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur Vatavrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare <laughs> Rama, Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 
Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama Krishna, 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 Krishna,
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare Rama, Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Gore Premanande, Hari 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 Thank you so much, Maharaj. It was a wonderful idea to chant with everyone. It gives us a feeling of association, personal association, and it's so blissful to chant. So, thank you so much, Maharaj. I got an announcement. Maybe devotees will find it interesting. Can I make my announcement? Yes, yes, sure, sure. Please, please. So, uh, every year in Radhadesh at this time, is the Radhadesh Mellows Kirtan, three days, sometimes four. And so this year they're doing an online event. So if you go to radhadeshmellows.com, you'll be able to get on and uh, take part in continuous Kirtan for the next three and a half days. Hare Bol. Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Some, some of the more uh, effulgent kirtan leaders in the movement, <laughs> the ones that have been doing kirtan practically their whole life. <laughs> is, um, is, is Gail still there? Or Gail, are you still there? No, she's not. I, I got the answer to her question when I was chanting. <laughs> and well you can share with us. You can share with us. Yeah. Uh, should I tell you what I understood? Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, that by sticking to your own swadharma, even though it's faulty, you make advancement ultimately to come to the to the stage of the mode of goodness. But if you do another person's duty, even though it's perfectly, you won't move forward towards the mode of goodness and ultimately transcendence. So 
you work with your own duty and then eventually it'll elevate you. Whereas doing another's duty even perfectly will not elevate you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. So good. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Everyone have a nice weekend. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay. Yes, so we can offer obeisances to all the devotees and Maharaj. So, Maharaj, thank Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna